Did you know that there's one very common question that almost all freelancers ask potential clients, which cuts their chances of getting hired by more than half? In this video, I'm gonna reveal that question and what you should ask instead. First, my name is Henry Bingaman. I've been a freelancer or independent professional since 2008. In those early years, I quickly went broke and almost quit, but eventually I was able to figure out the secrets and systems that make freelancing work and scale my income up to as much as over a million dollars a year. Today, I make videos like these to help freelancers like you make more money and have an easier life. So what's that dreaded question that freelancers ask potential clients that smashes their chances at getting work? Well, all right, picture this scenario. So you've been chatting with a potential client online or in person. You've already done the hard work of breaking the ice and figuring out that they're the great match for your freelancing and things seem great. Then when the moment feels right, you ask, so do you have any projects I could work on for you? And the client just screws up his face, really considering your question and says, hmm, I'll get back to you on that. And spoiler alert, in most cases, they're not gonna get back to you. They don't have any work. And if you wanna keep following up asking for work, they're gonna end up blocking your phone number or email address. So why, what is happening here? Well, the problem is you gave that person work to do. Freelancers are supposed to alleviate work. They're not supposed to make more work for the client to do. Now, the ideal way that the conversation would have gone is something like, let's say you're a freelance developer specializing in WordPress. The prospective client would say, you know, my WordPress site is a total mess right now. It never seems to load right. It doesn't work on mobile devices. Is that something you could help me fix? They have a problem, you have the skills to fix it. So at this point, you're just discussing your rates and your timeline, but if you're in their price range and they've asked you if you could help, you're most of the way to closing that deal already. The problem is you'll be lucky if you get one in 50 potential clients that have that perfect project right for you, right when you meet them. Now, the exception here is if you're using a freelance marketplace like Upwork or Fiverr, where clients are actually searching for solutions to specific problems. But at that point, you're competing with millions of other people to get paid less, literally. I have a whole other video on this you can check out. Now, on the other hand, if they don't have a glaring problem that you could immediately fix, you just ask them to go looking for problems in their business. That's the real problem with that question. You're asking them to go find a problem that you could eventually fix. Nobody ever wants to go looking for problems at work. They have enough problems as it is without looking for more. So now you're associated with problems in that client's mind. What you'd much rather be associated with is the relief of problems or the revelation of opportunity. So what are you supposed to do if not ask them if they have work for you? Well, over a long enough time frame, your goal is to build up enough people who you'll be the first person that comes to mind when there is a problem. So in the example I used earlier of the WordPress developer, the chance that a potential client's WordPress site is acting up at the moment you meet them is low. But the chance that it's going to start acting up sometime in the next couple of years is like 100%. If you're the first person that comes to mind for 100 potential clients, when they think something's going wrong with WordPress, I need help, you will never run out of work. However, let's just say you haven't spent the past two years filling your network with these potential clients who know, like, and trust you. Well, then you can do the next best thing, and that's make them an offer. So here's how you do that. First, in my experience, most freelancers aren't great at pitching their services on the spot. So the best thing you can do is ask if you can send them your information packet. You wanna send them something of value that's easy for them to say yes to. The point here is that this is a very easy request for you to ask that gets a yes from them. It's much easier for them to say yes to someone asking, can I send you my information pack? Than it is, hey, do you have any work I could do for you? You're literally just asking them if you're allowed to send them an email. You're not even asking them to read that email. Now, what you should send them is a one or two page PDF in an email attachment. This PDF has a little bit of benefit up front. So a little bit of something that helps the client, a system, a tip, whatever. You don't want it to just be about you though. You want it to be about the client and how it can help them. And then at the bottom of that, in the second page, put a testimonial or two about you, but also put a minimum of two services you offer. And the first service they see should be an opportunity, some way of helping grow their business. So if you're a developer, it might be something like a speed audit for your site. So it would say in that pitch, did you know that if your WordPress site loads too slowly, you could be losing 40% of your traffic? So let me do a quick audit for $200 and make sure all of your pages, especially your critical sales pages and opt-in pages are loading as fast as possible. Or let's say you're a designer. XYZ research shows that improving your website banner can make visitors spend as much as 25% more time on your website. 
And for $600, I'll create three alternative website banners that you can test out. The point is that it should be a low commitment offer with a big potential benefit. And here's the sneaky but totally ethically way to make this even stronger. Take a few hours to actually do some research on your potential client. Figure out exactly what you could do that would help them. Then write that up in a way that looks like it's just another service you offer, but it's actually highly tailored for them. So all of my initial clients came from pitching an easy opportunity that was specific to that client. So for one client who was running Google ads, my service was to write Facebook ads because they're one fifth the cost per click. For another client who had his own nutritional supplements, I wrote web sales copy for nutritional supplements so they could sell their products online on autopilot. So with both of those, it was easy to get the first yes. Then once I was in the door, I started pitching them more different offers based on the problems that I was seeing in their business, the opportunities I had to help them grow. And that's how I built my portfolio and my network of current and potential clients. So I do know this works. Now I did make a couple big mistakes early on. For example, I wasn't using the most professional tools I could. Now at the time it was because I couldn't afford them. And luckily today, a lot of those tools that I wish I would have had back then are free today. So let me show you the top five free tools that make even new freelancers look like a seasoned pro. Just go to henrybing.co slash free tools and you can get them absolutely free. The link is in the description. And if you really wanna take things to the next level, click the like button, click the subscribe button on this video. There's nothing better for your career than constantly stealing my best ideas. All right, guys, catch you in the next one.